From the cover-up of the Phoenix Lights incident to human giants and the real truth behind Planet X, these are five mysterious conspiracies explained. Number 5. Operation High Jump May 22, 1949, 1.50 a.m. The body of Mr. James Forrestal, a respected U.S. government official, is found at the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. The Department of the Navy ruled his death an apparent suicide due to his bad depression and high stress. Forrestal was a former Secretary of the Navy and the first ever U.S. Secretary of Defense. Needless to say, he knew a lot of top secret information. So, what led him to jump from his window? The official story states Mr. Forrestal was suffering from major depression and required psychiatric treatment for exhaustion. It is believed he had a mental breakdown when Harry Truman asked for his resignation as Secretary of Defense. People who don't buy this official narrative have theories of their own. Only a few months after the controversial Roswell incident, Forrestal kickstarted Operation High Jump, a mission to explore Antarctica. Officially titled the United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program, this exploration is believed to be an all-out invasion on whatever alien species was protecting the last underground Nazi compound, a remnant of World War II. It is believed that Forrestal was going public with this information and is the reason why he lost his mind, career, and life. So, a couple of things. First, Germans did lead expeditions to the South Pole in 1901, 1911, and 1938. Obviously, the most interesting one would have to be the Deutsche Antarktische Expedition between 38 and 39. Alfred Richter, a German Navy captain, wanted to create a whaling station because whale oil was awesome back then and it was used to create soap and margarine. How it went from searching for a whale station to hanging out with aliens in an underground base has to do with the little alien incident they had over in Germany. Now, this one is even crazier than Roswell, and there's not much evidence corroborating that it ever, ever happened. Second, the US's Operation High Jump is widely accredited to Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd, not Mr. Forrestal. Byrd did not die mysteriously and was never the center of widespread public controversy. Wait, hold on, what? Oh no. In a 1947 interview with the Chilean newspaper El Mercurio, Bird said, the fantastic speed with which the world is shrinking is one of the most important lessons learned during the, his recent Antarctic exploration. I have to warn my compatriots that the time has ended when we were able to take refuge in our isolation and rely on the certainty that the distances, the oceans and the poles were a guarantee of safety. So what does this mean? It meant that the US is no longer protected just by its isolation. And third, personally, I think this is all just a smokescreen for the real threat. The Penguin Air Force Master Race. Just look at them. What do you think they're up to? Number 4. You are for sale. We all love social media. Well, most of us love social media. Since the creation of MySpace, thank God all that information on there was purged, social websites entered the mainstream. Sure, there was Blogger and Friendster, but were they really that popular? Uh, not in the USA. For most of us, Facebook was the first real gigantic taste of fame and popularity. It was a rat race of making new connections and friends. Then there was Instagram, which made everyone feel like a professional photographer. Twitter made us feel like journalists. And the biggest of them all, Google Plus, made us realize that not every social network is created equal. Between all the photos, videos, comments, tweets, Snapchats, people started wondering, how is this all free? Advertising. That's how. To be able to target ads to potential customers is crucial, and Facebook was the perfect platform to learn everything about everyone. And the stalking doesn't stop there. Facebook can actually track your usage on other websites through cookies. So if you're really into reading blogs about dieting and healthy living, the ads displayed on Facebook will reflect that. And a fun stat. Accounting for daily active users, Facebook would be the third largest country in the world with a population of around 500 million people. 
From one viewpoint, it's not the worst thing in the world to be shown things that might interest you, but on the other hand, people can see what you posted that one time when you were really drunk at 3 a.m. 10 years ago. What is the conspiracy here? A lot of people believe that our personal space is gone. There is absolutely no privacy. And before you know it, all that information these social media websites have on you will be used against your best interests. Number three, Planet X. Who do we have to thank for this beautiful conspiracy that has no signs of slowing down? Nancy Leader came up with the Planet X or sometimes called Nibiru back in 1995. Believe it or not, Nancy was visited by aliens from the Zeta Reticuli star system. They put a communications device in her brain and have been feeding her info about Nibiru ever since. She claims that a cataclysmic event will occur sometime in the near future. A distant planet that we have no scientific proof of will collide with planet Earth. Oh no, no, wait, wait, never mind. Planet X would actually just come really close to Earth and cause a pole shift, which would destroy most of life on Earth as we know it. It was all supposed to go down in early 2003, but I guess the aliens gave her the wrong info? This hasn't stopped any wild imaginations though. Nibiru is a hot topic to this day, and YouTube is partially responsible for a few viral videos on the subject. Proponents have claimed that Google, NASA, and the US government are actively censoring the truth about this so-called Planet X. What bugs me though, is the fact that anyone can buy a telescope and look at the location of where Nibiru is supposed to be. Did the government also censor the night sky somehow? Big if true. On a fun note, two smart guys from Caltech did some math and proposed a hypothetical ninth planet in our solar system. Much, much farther away than Pluto, and there's no chance of it ever messing our magnetic poles up, so... Number 2. The Phoenix Lights Phoenix, Arizona. The perfect place to cook eggs and bacon on the pavement during the day and experienced crazy UFO sightings during the night. On March 13, 1997, the night sky around Phoenix lit up from seven mysterious lights, closely resembling the shape of a boomerang. As far as I know, this is the best and most popular photo from that night. And damn, it does look like a giant spaceship with seven lights underneath. Here is the event from a different angle. Not so convincing anymore, right? I was driving through a deserted stretch of I-25 in New Mexico during the night, listening to a noisy AM station. They were discussing this event and the radio show host shared a story about an old fella who lived in Phoenix. He supposedly got everything on tape, an actual clear view of the spaceship, the whole nine yards. He contacted a reporter and set up a date when they could come pick up the tapes. The reporter came by that day, but the old man stated that someone from the news station had already come to collect the tapes a day earlier. As it turns out, those were the G-men. So what's the official story? The US Air Force did test flights on the A-10 Warthog near the Barry M. Goldwater Air Force Range. Military planes have defense mechanisms that consist of flares, nicknamed angel wings. It's easy to see how some people might get confused if they see this especially at night. Number 1. Giants Here is a mystery that is much older than most, the mythical tale of human giants. Stories of these strong, gigantic beings predate Greek mythology and make famous appearances in the Old Testament, where they're referred to as the Nephilim. The most famous giant story from the Bible is the tale of David versus Goliath. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Goliath is described as being 6 foot 9 inches tall, while other versions say he is 9 foot 9 inches tall. Just for comparison, the tallest man in recorded medical history is Robert Wadlow, coming in at 8 foot 11. The Nephilim have been speculated to reach heights of 30 feet, depending on interpretation. So we have all these so-called giants. Pretty cool for a bedtime tale. But then you know how the internet does things. Many photos of giant human remains have surfaced through the years, from Brazil to Saudi Arabia. Now, depending on your beliefs, you might think this is all just outlandish and crazy, or actual proof of stories from the Old Testament. One thing is for sure, 
not one of these pictures can be proven as real. If you stumbled across a giant human skull, would you really only take one picture and never speak of it again? Maybe. This is one more of those uneasy truths that the government is trying to hide from us. What do you think? Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.